Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. A Dream Studio has a new editor that allows in-painting and out-painting. That means we can remove pieces of an image, add keywords, and have it draw in those pieces that are missing. Uh, obviously, a lot of us are probably going to use this for the missing heads, maybe to try and fix hands and other things along that line. So at least that's worth motivating me. Now, the tool is pretty good, but it is still a beta. And I'd say just about every day, it doubles in its capability. So if you do get some weird results from it, and you will get weird results from it, Give it some time because again, I said yesterday this thing probably updated three or four different times. So they are working very quickly behind the scenes to try and make it as shiny as they can. And it's just going to take time. Again, it's been one day from the time that I'm recording this video uh, to the time it was released, uh, and it's already better than it was during the beta. So let's take a look at how to use it. And I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to get, I think, the best results. So here we are at dreamstudio.ai. I'll put a link in the description if you're not familiar with it. So again, these are the same people that bring you the one that you can install locally, which a lot of people have done. Uh, but this is the 1.5 version. So this is new and shiny. Uh, 1.4 is the only one you can get publicly available at this time. Uh, remember that the money that is raised by this site and is a paid service um, is used to fund the free one. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you're not familiar with all these settings over here, I did cover them in another video. Uh, we're not really going to play with too much of that. We are going to play with the width and the height, though. Uh, and that's basically where I'm going to start. So for the width, I'm just going to kind of pick one here. I tend to like this aspect ratio. And uh, I prefer, uh, just personal preference, I prefer the Euler model here. So that's what we're going to choose. And then we're going to go ahead and choose Show Editor. Now, I did a video on the editor before when we talk about an influence image. And that is where you upload an image here, put some keywords down, and then say, how much is the image actually going to be paid attention to versus the keywords? This is a really cool combination of things, and I'm very excited for that. This allows you to kind of take that to the next step. So I'm going to drop an image in here that I've made in Stable Diffusion, actually. Now, right away, you have the ability to grab the Move tool, and you can nudge this around, scale it. And when you're scaling, by the way, you can scale it and you can trim it. Uh, it does not scale disproportionately, so you cannot destroy the aspect ratio of the image, which is a good thing, because we don't want to make her, uh, you know, squished in a certain direction. Uh, so that's kind of nice. And then you would go ahead and say, generate this. Um, I wouldn't use it this way. Uh, first of all, I think that this is uh, not the best use of this function uh, because you can do this in Photoshop already with Content Aware Fill. So we're going to clear this and I want to show you how I do use it. So the second option for a tool aside from moving is the brush. So with the brush, you can go ahead and indicate the size of the brush you would like and the amount of blur that the brush would give. And you can go ahead and highlight some stuff. So let's say, let's give her some nice new sunglasses. That's going to be our. Um, I have already asked for them to make it so the bracket keys will allow you to increase or decrease the size of the brush, including use of the scroll wheel and the mouse, which I think would be really great. Uh, but, you know, it's a long list of things in development, but I'm hoping they move that up pretty far on the list since it probably isn't very difficult to implement. If you do screw up, you always have this here, which is the restore or the eraser, until I need to go back and bring back any areas of the mask that you accidentally masked. So I'm just going to go ahead and give her some sunglasses here. something like this, and then type in what you would like for the sunglasses. So what I've done is typed in the prompt of Fire Red Sunglasses by Greg Witkowski, Unreal Engine. Um, I look at Unreal Engine is just like an artist because again, it has a specific look. Uh, so I just throw it in there with the artist as well. And then let's go ahead and hit Dream. I'm gonna generate a few different images. Let's generate four at a time and hit Dream. And it should use the masked area to create the sunglasses. Again, it may not be perfect, but it's a good start. And there we go. We got a couple that are usable and a couple that are not usable. Uh, but again, it's under development. As I said, this probably doubles in ability every given day. Uh, so don't worry if it isn't exactly what you like. Now, this one turned out pretty nice. Uh, let's roll it one more time. As long as the image editor down here shows the mask area, as long as you click Dream, you're going to continue to apply only to the mask area. These are fine. You know what she needs? She needs Steampunk. Actually, cyberpunk. Just basically put the word punk after every word in the English language. And we get some pretty weird results, which is all fine with me. So if you want to obviously work with one of these images, you can download it now. You can steal the seed and then go ahead and create smaller variations based on the seed. Or if you click edit, note that if you click open in editor, it's going to replace what you have now. We can go back to show editor now and refine our mask if we need to. Know that if you're clicking on the back button, it's going to take you back to previous prompts as well. At any time you'd like, by the way, you can switch this to be an influence image. 
So if we wanted to influence the entire image, we could do so. And you can see in this case that it has redrawn the entire image and given her some different sunglasses applying the original image in an 80%. Uh, so again, another way to do it. And of course, a combination of the two is pretty amazing. So you can see here by going in and adding a mask and then using something like image strength, uh, we have a great combination of things that we can then pull into our post-production process and edit as we would like. I'm sure a lot of additional tools will be coming to this over time. So right now we've just got these basic ones, uh, but brush finesse capabilities and other things like drawing straight lines will hopefully be something they add uh, sooner than later, which should be pretty easy, I would imagine. Uh, but the engine behind this is the part that I'm very excited about and watching it grow. So you can see there's a lot of possibility with this, uh, being able to edit the image, going in and creating the mask areas we want to replace with keyworded prompts is pretty cool. And uh, then being able to take that image and use it as a point of departure for an influence is also very cool. Now, the combination of the two things is great. So we can pull it into our post-production process, be in Photoshop or Rebellion or any other product that we're using, and come up with something very cool that is our art. Uh, so I'm very excited for these things. And again, this is probably doubled in capability every given day uh, because the teams are working so hard, even on their vacations or on holidays, uh, which is pretty awesome. And we really appreciate that. Uh, so I'm very excited for where this is going to be going. Now I'm heading to Florida tomorrow, uh, so it'll be a few days before I'll be back. I uh, hope to do some live streams from there, uh, but we'll see how that goes. I'm actually teaching at a conference for five days, and I will be back uh, with a lot more stuff. So we'll see what happens in the AI art world. And everybody take care and stay safe.